So today we're going to talk about symmetric circuits. In particular, we're going to look at this from a resistive version, although we could certainly extend this out uh, to a number of different regions, but talk about sort of linear resistive circuits. And the reason that we get into a question like this is that we often have circuits where we have two things that look like almost, almost dual mirrors of each other. Sometimes this happens because we're explicitly building circuits that are going to bias each other and balance each other very common differential circuits, but sometimes it just happens. And so you'll get a case where I get two identical looking blocks, both being at this case called the name A1 because they're going to be identical blocks. Maybe they have different voltages applied to them, and of course we know we can use different voltages and there's this, this whole concept around superposition that allows me to kind of take different versions of those inputs. And you think, well wait a minute, maybe if I take the inputs in a different way I could do something different with it. And so what you often do is say, well, I've got two blocks and I've got a line of symmetry between them. And in that line of symmetry, depending on how I approach it, I might be able to do some very unique things. What we find is this, is that I can talk about inputs being equal, so that it might move up and down at the same amount. And then I'll also find blocks that are going to turn out to move in opposite directions, differential blocks. And this turns out to actually allow me to simplify the circuit that instead of having both A1 blocks to work with, I can just have one of them. And then I have to think about, well, what's the edge conditions in the boundary? Well, this is an interesting perspective because if I have both of them being the same, I might imagine, imagine I have my two fingers and they're the identical. If I'm moving them up and down and up and down with the same voltages, the middle one didn't change and nothing is communicating across it. It stays the same. So one of the things we find for that symmetry is that we can actually just cut this line such that no current flows across it because nothing is changing or going across those equal levels. For differential inputs, it's kind of a similar thing, but imagine I have two fingers and now I'm applying differential voltages to it. What do I notice? I notice that basically the middle voltage doesn't move. And so what I'm basically doing with the symmetry is saying no, I actually can say the symmetry point here basically means that voltage stays fixed. In this case, voltage would be like at ground or at some fixed potential. So that really opens up a lot of possibilities. And You're thinking, well that might be useful, but why don't you show me an example? I never thought you'd ask. So let's talk about a very interesting symmetric circuit. And you might be able to see there's a symmetry to the two pieces of the circuit here with uh, 100 100k ohm resistor, 200k, and the same thing on the other side. It should be pretty easy to see where the line of symmetry is. It should be right through the middle. Now, I could have drawn this circuit as with a simplification of two, of just a 200k ohm resistor. And that still would have been like through the middle of the resistor would have been the point of symmetry. So be aware that there's some interesting ways that you can operate here. But I kept it explicit so that the line of symmetry is very clear. And then you say, well, okay, that gives me two equivalent half circuits. So what would that look like? And if I'm looking at voltages VA and VB, which I'll also call V1 and V2, um, those would be sort of input voltages, what, or, you know, those, those voltages that I'm looking at there, um, what I'm going to see from a common mode circuit is I'll just have the one piece, but then this other aspect is left as an open circuit. And you think, hmm there's no current going out of there. It's as if that resistance is not there anymore. So all I have is a very simple voltage divider between 100 and 200 K. Okay, so in that case, what I'm realizing is that um, the amount of voltage I'm getting is basically just two thirds at this intermediate node, this V1 and this V2 point. And so what you find out that VC in this case is then just the average of the inputs, which would, would be VA and VB, and equal to the, just the, the average of the two. Now for the differential mode, it gets similar but a little bit different in the sense if I take this intermediate node and I know that now this is going to be sitting to ground. And so because it's at, the, at a fixed point for the differential circuit and what I'm going to be doing is applying the differential voltage which is going to be half of VA minus VB over two, so half on one side and then half on the other side of it to balance it and what I will then do is then I have this resulting circuit for VD and then getting my resulting output. 
Well, it turns out that what I'm going to get for v1, which is going to be exactly the negative of v2, is going to be resulting of this voltage divider, which gives me two-fifths of that differential voltage. And so if I were to ask what would it look like in the original circuit, well, v1 would now be, you know, basically would be the common term that I would have gotten from here, and then plus the differential term I would get there. And then I'm finished. And v2 would then be the common term minus the differential term. And so everything kind of stays in balance. It becomes very, very quick to analyze this because I can get a very large looking circuit of this form, but very quickly I can see it and break it apart and pretty much by intuition come up with the answers without having to think too hard about any of these questions.